So we're back in Seaside with the Godfather of Fisherman's Wharf, Mr. Anthony Lushido. And Lushido, if you want to say it correctly. And I've been working on that. And uh, it's Friday, March 27th, 2015. I don't think we'd really talked about the date too much, but you can time stamp it. So today we're here, we're going to start talking a little bit more about Fisherman's Wharf of Monterey. Uh, this is, after all, about the Godfather of Fisherman's Wharf. Um, you? <laughs> so uh, any time, any story? Just right. I'm going to give you a real brief story, Joe. Sure. This was about when I was a cook at Rapids, and we were mostly kids back then, all 16 to 20. And there was a couple guys, Chris Arcaleo and Nick Lemon, who owned, Chris owns uh, Chris's Fishing Trips. Anyway, at that time, we, was, we were like 17, 18 years old. And we told Chris, she says, if there's a place underneath the restaurant where you could boost yourself up, and you'll see right underneath all the girls' dresses. <laughs> well, the place we told them to boost themselves up was in the kitchen, where was a vent, so we would wait with a bucket of water. Oh. So here comes Chris. You would see him coming up. Boosted himself up off the, on the hole in the pipes and boosted himself up, and we threw the bucket on him. <laughs> <laughs> right? So he goes and tells Nick a little later, Nick, you gotta go. You gotta go see it. <laughs> you can't imagine what you're gonna see. So here comes Nick, grabs the bars, pulls himself up, boom, we get him with a bucket of water. That's one of the crazy things we should do. At Rapids. <laughs> That's great. Sometimes it was one of my friends, Anthony Galaro, who was actually my best friend at the time. He was a crankster. You'd grab your apron, and there'd be pots tied to the end of it. <laughs> Anthony was something else. There was the chef, was uh, Russell Bologna. And Russell used to go in the back, which was kind of a dark area, where he would make all the dressings, the salad dressings and all that. We got a big lingcod head with its mouth open and the teeth showing. And we put it underneath one of the uh, shelves where he would be bent over working on his uh, dressings. And it was ugly looking. It had big teeth. Oh, yeah, lingcods. They got yeah. alligator teeth. Yeah. And the eyes. Mm. And he was making his dressings. And we told him, Russell, don't move. I think there's a rat under there. So he turned around, he looked, and he <laughs> flew out of that place. He's still running. That thing is, those are mean lingcods are oh, nasty. Yeah. I mean, if, and if you saw this thing, the way we put, we put it, <laughs> and the, what you saw, it, I would have ran out of there if I didn't know what it was. That's awesome. Yeah, that's some of the crazy things we did as kids. Then I went to work at Peninsula Fish Market where I worked for 17 years. Wow. I was the manager there, and uh, we did all kinds, we were probably at that time in the 60s, the biggest wholesaler in Monterey. We had all Del Monte property, all Cattery Row, all of the wharf, we delivered fish. We even had an abalone plant in Morro Bay. Nice. Where me and my cousin Buster would go down and pick up abalone every week. Are you free diving or pull them up in crates or how'd you farm no, them? No, no, it was all processed. We had a plant down there that processed it. It was boxed, pounded. Oh. And I think uh, the large steaks at that time, which were nice and big, were selling like three fifty a pound. Now I'm only as about over sixty to seventy five dollars a pound. Wow. I and no it's idea. not even half the size. And so that's one of the things we used to and we would wholesale it to like all the fish were rappers and Mike Seafood and all the market, all the places down there, even Del Monte Lodge, Pebble Beach. They would come off that truck and was delivered to all these restaurants. Then we we used to get up we get in there in the morning early about seven o'clock and we had an ice table, which was huge. And we had a big wheelbarrow huge wheelbarrow and the ice machines in the back were making flaked ice and we would fill that wheelbarrow about three times 
and pound it on this big ice table. We put boards and then we pound the ice down and then we would put all kinds of the fish on it. We had one side was all whole rock cod, different types. We had fillet of sole, fillet of snapper, fillet of uh, halibut, uh, prawns, kingfish, you name it, it was on that table. So one day, one of our boats brought in about a 50-pound octopus. Back in those days, those, uh, they got huge. And it was still alive. So he, I, we had it in the back, and it would start running and climbing the, the walls. <laughs> I, so I would, you would never put your hand in front of them because they'll bite your finger off. They got a big beak. Wow. But you grab them by the back of the head, and, and I would pull it off the wall, and you could hear the this popping, the, the uh, tentacles popping as it pulled it off, and he'd start scared, running again. So finally, we get, we, he died, and we killed him. And we would hang him in front of the fish market, and people would buy the legs. Oh. That was a delicacy hmm. back then. That's a big, big one. Oh, yeah. I mean, they get gigantic in the deep ocean, but for anywhere near the shore, 50 oh, they get pounds. Big, they get, you know, the, the, the boats got them. They're huge. We, used to get fresh, we had boats fishing all day. Day and night we were unloading boats there. Salmon, albacore, cod. My grandfather, I'll tell you a little story. My grandfather even fished for us, and my grandfather Antonio. And one day, I'm unloading his fish, and there was this big, big man, his name was Captain, we used to call him Captain Neil. I didn't know him at the time, and he didn't know me. Neil? Neil, yeah. Okay. So I'm in the back, my grandfather's tied up, we're pulling up the fish, and Neil comes in the back of the market and tells me, you better make sure you give that old man the right weight. And I told him, don't worry about it. He's my grandfather. <laughs> that was one of the things that happened there. Nice. Well, he's yeah. looking out for your grandfather. Yeah. My, a lot of people have a lot of respect for my grandfather because he helped a lot of young fishermen. Mm -hmm. He'd show them, you know, different things that he had, he knew over the, had learned over the years. So he, was examples? A, he was an influence on uh, Lemon, Nick and Chris. He, you know, he had told them as they were kids different things, different little tricks that he knew, and they never forgot it. So he, he was very well respected on the Fisherman's Wharf. Nice. My grandfather. Yeah. Well, a lot of times he would fish and he would come in. He always walked home. He lived in New Monterey. So we, once in a while, we'd add, you want to ride home? And he'd go, okay, that means he was tired. Hmm. So one of us would bring him even one of the drivers, or my, not myself, usually I couldn't go, but one of the drivers would bring him home. And he insisted that you have a shot of EO. Whenever anybody <laughs> brought him home, they had to have a shot of EO. The bottle was on the table. <laughs> that was my grandfather. Other times, uh, I used to, time, he would give half his fish away. He would pull on the back, to unload, and he had his buddies that were watching for him to come in. And they would come in, and he would say, uh, how many fish you want? And he would give them. How many fish you want? And he would they give it to him. I said, by the time he got done, he had no fish to sell. But he would rather give the fish away than sell it. Hmm. That's the way he was.